But I can't make more breakout rooms because we have a breakout room going right now. So today is Friday, April 7th, and we're starting mod 12, which is about uh, environments and adaptations. Let me show it to you. So today's assignment is actually mod 12, um, 1201. We skipped the pretest, surviving in different environments. And it's about adaptations, which is an important topic. And we're gonna identify and describe um, adaptations of animals and talk about energy and the way it moves through our systems from one animal to another. Uh, it's 11 pages long. It's a pretty long one. At the end of it, there's a quiz that I'd like you to do today. So maybe about 20 minutes doing the lesson and 10 minutes doing the quiz should do it, okay? You can stay with me and I'll walk you through the whole thing. Um, or you can go do it with friends in room two, which is already open. So if you prefer to go work with students, uh, actually, it looks like the other kids might have left room one. So we have room one and room two. So we're doing 1201 and you can choose to do it in room one or room two. Okay. Into room Questions? one. I mean two. Well, go ahead and go. If you want to go work with students, make sure you go through the lesson. I'm going to walk through the lesson right now. And then at the end of it, you're supposed to take the quiz. Look at these beautiful starfish. Aren't they gorgeous? Oceans are full of dangerous animals. So how does a small, slow, slow moving starfish survive? Starfish have amazing adaptations that have helped them survive for millions of years. After an attack, they can regrow most of their body parts from a single arm. It's true. Well, we don't recommend chopping off a starfish's arm just to see what happens. It will grow back. And you know, lizards' tails will do that too. They'll come off, like if you grab a lizard by the tail, the tail will come off and it'll wiggle in your hand and the lizard will run away with no tail and within about a month or so, it can grow a new tail. What? No! It does take oh. a lot of energy for it to regrow the tail, so it's not very good for it. What other adaptations shown by animals may help them survive in different environments? Let's learn about them now. At the end of this lesson, you should be able to identify and describe how adaptations help animals survive. Identify and describe the energy in an animal's food and how it's used for body repair, growth, motion, and to keep warm. And describe how an energy in animal's food or in our food once came from the sun. All right, here we go. Let's go on a little scientific journey. What is an adaptation? It's whatever helps you survive in your particular environment. So for example, for a whale, it's the thick layer of blubber that keeps it warm. For a hummingbird, it's that long beak that can fit into the right kind of flowers. Those are all adaptations that help organisms uh, survive. Here, observe the picture of the chameleon and the picture of the cheetahs. Can you tell what adaptation, what one do you think chameleons have? By the way, they're so cool looking. Camouflage. Yeah, camouflage. They can change color to fit into their environment. How about a cheetah? What's its adaptation? Running Speed. fast. Speed. Yeah, being able to run really fast. And actually, it's got all sorts of adaptations. You see how weird their bodies look when they're running? They can really, like, move their joints. Really it looks fast. like a weird view. A weird what? View? Like, young, uh, like a letter U. Oh, they look like they're flying, too, don't they? <laughs> All right, page three. Animals can have three different types of adaptations, physical, behavior, and life cycle. So a physical adaptation is something like a wing or a big fat beak like a pelican has that helps it survive. Webbed feet is an example of a physical characteristic. That one's pretty easy. Behavioral adaptations are behaviors that help animals survive. So they say zebras travel in herds. They stay in a big group to help protect them from predators. Fish do that as well. Zebras will also circle another zebra if the herd in the herd if it gets attacked. They do this to get the predator to leave. So any behavior that helps an animal survive is going to be a behavioral adaptation. Finally, a life cycle adaptation could be things like, you know how, I don't know if you've heard about locusts and how they stay um, in, a, in, a, 
an egg form kind of for like seven years. And then they all hatch at the same time and they eat every single bit of food that there is in an area. So they couldn't stay there. So then they reproduce and they die and their babies go back underground for like seven years. Pretty tricky. I know that shock babies eat each other inside the mom. Wow. Like they just sure. eat each other. The male seahorse carries the eggs while the female seahorse makes more eggs. This allows for seahorses to make more babies in a shorter amount of time. Basically, the dude does the pregnancy. <laughs> it sounds weird. So think about those three kinds of adaptations, physical, behavioral, and life cycle adaptations. Reaching the top. There are many examples of adaptations that play important roles in the survival of animals. The giraffe has adapted by having a long neck that lets it reach the top of the trees that nobody else can eat up there. Let's explore some more. Guys, see what this animal is here? Do you see it? It's a, it's the walk, it's it's a stick it. bug. Yeah, when I was in class, I used to have a bunch of these in a terrarium that kids could watch. And then we had babies. But then we had a whole lot of babies like... I don't know, like 40. And then we came to school the next day and there were only like 30 babies. And then the next day there were only like 20 babies. <laughs> but the ones that were left were getting bigger. Do you know what they were doing? They were eating each other. Cannibals. <laughs> Vivi, yeah. Cannibalism is actually used for strategy in animals and it's used um, in yeah. a lot, plenty of animals, basically. Yeah, to, uh, yeah. yeah like they eat the... Yeah. It was pretty surviving. I mean, it was pretty surprising though. Every day we were counting our stick bugs and there were just less and less, but the ones that were left were a lot bigger. <laughs> All right. And this has several pages. Here's a panda, uh, Vivi's favorite animal. Not really. The panda has six fingers on its paws while other bears have only five. The sixth finger helps the panda hold large bamboo stalks, which is its favorite food, even though Vivi has told us, or maybe she just told me, do you want to tell them about the panda's food? Uh, that it's based, oh yeah, um, basically it is nutrient deficient and it's just um, not the best for them and their body is actually programmed to eat meat. So they're just, they're just eating junk food and they should eat more meat. <laughs> All right, hedgehogs, which are adorable, have behaviors that help them survive in the winter. In the fall, hedgehogs prepare for winter by eating a lot of food and building nests. A lot of animals do that. In the winter, they hibernate. So they lower their heart rate and their body temperature and they don't move at all and it helps them survive. King cobras often expand their ribs and muscles on both sides of the neck to make them look bigger. This helps the king cobra protect itself against predators. So that's an adaptation, being able to expand their neck. That's a physical adaptation. Sea turtles lay a large number of eggs in the sand as just opposed to a few eggs. Many baby sea turtles get eaten by predators before they reach the water. Laying a large number of eggs increases the amount of turtles that survive. This is an example of a life cycle adaptation. So that, those are kind of tricky, but a lot of animals will have a lot of babies with the point being that most of them are gonna die. Kind of sad. Arctic bumblebees have the adaptation of a short life cycle. Most Arctic bumblebees do not survive hibernation. So their life cycle is shorter. The queen bee is the only one that usually survives. She becomes pregnant before hibernation. And then she lays the eggs in the spring and the new bees come out and they have one year and then they die again. Wow. That's a life cycle adaptation. Okay, on to page five. Oh, does anybody know what that animal is? Lemur. Lemur, isn't he cute? A ring-tailed lemur, I think. Observe the long tail of the lemur as it jumps from tree to tree. Lemurs have long tails. What kind of adaptation is that? Physical, right? Physical adaptation that helps them balance and gather food. Here is a table showing about the lemur's physical characteristic, how it helps them survive, and that it's a physical characteristic. Print the adaptation shown by animals activity sheet. This is only for practice. You do not have to turn this one in. For each animal, fill out what its adaptation is, 
how it survives, how that helps it survive, and whether it's a physical, behavioral, or life cycle difference. Cougar cubs have fur with spots that helps them blend into the forest floor. That would be a physical, behavioral, or life cycle. I'm not hearing anything. Come on, guys. Answer. What do you think it is? Is that a physical adaptation, a behavioral one, or a life cycle? <laughs> Having spots. It's a be, is it like an adaptation? But what kind of adaptation? Is it physical? Is it behavioral? Or is it life cycle? This is like a, like, this the fur would be physical. It's something physical, yeah. on them, right? Yeah. How about this one? The blue striped snapper swims together in large groups. They swim yeah. in the same direction. What kind is that? What kind of adaptation? Behavioral. Behavioral is right. The behaving. Yeah. The male cardinal fish carries eggs in its mouth. Oh, we were wondering who did that. Remember that? Oh, yeah. That was in our book, I think. This helps protect the eggs from predators. What kind of a, uh, uh, I just said it. Did you hear me say it? What kind of an adaptation is that? And I think it's like a cycle, life cycle. No, it's not life cycle, although having a lot of eggs would be the life cycle, but it's something that the, the fish is doing, right? It's choosing to do it. So yeah, behavioral. Behavioral. Here's some rabbits, baby rabbits, with their eyes aren't even open yet. They can have anywhere from three to 12 offspring at a time. This helps to increase the number that will survive. What kind of an adaptation is that? It's like a cycle. That's a life cycle. Mm-hmm. The sun bear has sharp claws that uses to tear open beehives. What kind of, and the long tongue. Look at that thing's tongue. Isn't that physical? Yeah, that's physical. Yep. Look at that, what the heck of a tongue is. That is quite a tongue that creature had. <laughs> well, so that's why I didn't know there was a thing called a sun bear. Did you know there are over 650 species of birds in North America? You read that mm. correctly. Out of these species, over 75% of them migrate. And look at all those. Are those like flamingos? Oh, good. <laughs> Migration is a behavioral adaptation. It's something the birds do that helps them survive. Yeah, for like the winter. Yep. They move south. And that's why those penguins fly to the rainforest. No, they don't. The penguins <laughs> <don't> fly. <laughs> Continue to practice what you know about adaptations and how it helps. I know how you could fly back when I was younger. The female peafowl, which is like a peacock, has dull colored feathers and the male peafowl has colorful feathers. This makes it easier for females to hide. So that would be a physical adaptation because she can't really change what color she is, right? Yeah. No. Gray whales migrate. Migration is a? Behavioral. Yep. Mm -hmm. Every year from the Arctic Ocean to the warm water of Mexico. There are no dummies. Let's see. Who else do we have here? Oh, look, the mola mola is a fish that releases over 300 million eggs during its mating season. What? Eggs get fertilized. That's a Imagine lot of mola molas. Imagine by releasing more eggs, the chance of not that many babies. I've never even seen a mola mola. Look at that weird looking fish. It's like, it's like a, it's called, it's also called like, I think it's like also, it looks like an ocean sunfish. It does kind of look like a sunfish. I have seen a sunfish. They are weird. The benefits you know, of food. Sunfish. Have you ever skipped a meal? Have any of you ever skipped a meal? And then wondered why you were so tired and didn't know why you were so hungry? Well, food's important for you to feel good and not hungry. It's important for all animals. Thank Food you. is needed for animals to survive, just like it's needed for you. Let's find out why. Why do animals need food? Growth, motion. Food helps provide energy for all living organisms. Let's learn how this energy is used. How do elephants use it? They use it to grow from the small elephant into the gigantic elephant. They use it to move. Look at those beautiful wild horses. We have wild horses in Oregon. Body. They use it for warmth. What? If in fact, if you're gonna be somewhere really cold, you can eat things with fat in them like butter and it will keep your body warmer. They use it to repair their bodies if they're injured. Look at this elephant seal has got some wounds. 
So, so it's gonna eat. So, if you eat, you heal, they heal the wounds. Yeah. Well, you need the energy to heal your body. I really wish that was life. This bird is eating a worm. It will use the energy from the worm to grow and be strong and healthy. In order to move and grow, birds need food. Birds eat food like worms, small insects, nectar. Where does the energy come from? Well, let's see here. The sun gives energy to plants that have green leaves. The plants give energy to the animals that eat plants. The animals that eat plants give energy to the animals that eat other animals. There we go. Sun provides energy. Without the sun, none of us would be alive. Yeah. Even if yeah. you don't like vegetables. <laughs> so that's important to know that all energy comes from the sun. Energy from the sun is transferred from one organism to another. A food chain is a way to show the path of energy as it moves from organism to organism. The arrows in a food chain always show the direction the energy is going from a producer, and that's a thing that can produce its own energy. It has to be a green plant to a consumer, something that uses energy. You're gonna now create a two-dimensional model of the food chain. Wow, how are you doing that? Your model should include all of this. I don't know where, oh, here we go, they drew it. <laughs> Share your model. I don't know where they want you making the model, but we don't have time for a model today. We're gonna go on. Okay, what did I learn? In order to survive, animals have adapted. There are three kinds of adaptations physical, behavioral, or life cycle. Long legs is an example of a physical one. Uh, puffing out your, your head if you're a cobra is a behavioral one. And a life cycle like having 300 million eggs is a life cycle one. I'm still trying to process how you would take care of all of those babies. Well, I don't think that they do take care of them. Fish are not excellent parents. Okay, here we go. Take the 1201 Surviving Different Environments quiz. You can do it. All right, friends. That is it. You may go and do the quiz in, there's only two breakout rooms, but if you want to go do it in a breakout room, you can. In fact, nobody's in there, so I'll make more breakout rooms. Um, I'll remake them. And then um, otherwise, you can take off. You need to take this quiz. If you have any questions about it, you can tell me. You can work with a friend. It's not really a test. Okay? And I will see you on Monday. Have a wonderful weekend. Yeah, I'm going to watch a movie. We'll leave the breakout room.